Oof, this opening scene is yikes. In one scene, this show manages to completely reveal their incompetent writing. Are the writers trying to hit some kind of bad writing speedrun that I don't know about? If that was the case, I would actually commend the show's achievement in how to get everything wrong in the fastest amount of time. Look, I don't need to make a Star Wars Acolyte review, and you don't need it either. You know it will be bad, and all you're doing now is trying to find solace among angry geeks who are vocalizing your thoughts in a comedic way. That's fine, we all have our way of grieving over the destruction of our favorite franchises. But as John Kavanaugh always says, you either win or you learn. And this is a perfect opportunity to learn where the scene went wrong and how we could improve on it. Let's look at the plot beats first. May, a lone assassin, arrives to Uida. She's tracking down Master Indara. She finds her at one of the cantinas. May challenges Indara, but Indara refuses to fight. May provokes Indara into fighting. Indara overpowers May, and May resorts to using a hostage. Indara drops her guard, and May takes advantage to assassinate Indara. If I saw this plot breakdown, I would instantly highlight these and ask for more clarification, because typically assassins don't challenge their targets into battle. They normally find the most opportune moment to attack to give themselves the best chance of success without being seen or caught. A competent assassin would not ask for where she could find the target in such an obvious manner. She would not go into a crowd cantina and stand in front of the target directly, challenging them into a fight, especially if the target is a Jedi Master. Male 20 feet to the left by the sedan. McDonald. Hit. If you want to go down the assassination route, you could start the scene off with May on the rooftop, looking at Master Indara leaving the cantina. We could cut to a night scene where we find Master Indara meditating in a quiet area where she's staying. It would be less crowded, but it would still have the potential for hostages to appear. But, if you're focusing on the challenge aspect, where May is there to prove herself by defeating Master Indara, you could have it in the cantina pretty easily. It would imply that May wants to show off her new skills that she gained. Master Indara could refuse, and May could proceed to taunt her and even attempt to attack Indara's allies, only to be stopped. If May was trying to prove herself, she wouldn't use a hostage, since she would see it as unsportsmanlike. Of course, you could have her use one as an act of desperation when she realizes that she's losing, but at that point she already lost, undermining the supposed new power she obtained. You could still have the same plot beats in both cases, but picking one would strengthen May's character as a competent assassin or just a powerful antagonist. Now, this is why I think the writers are doing a bad writing speedrun. Um, I messed up. There you go. <laughs> Complicated many things. I don't know, man. They successfully mix the worst versions of both options and immediately destroys both May and Master Indara. It's like the writers couldn't pick between the tropes, so they went with all of them. I wanted to be a few monsters, so I just took a couple pieces from each of them. It does indicate a lack of writing confidence, but trust me, it gets worse. Let me examine the scene, because I feel like the plot summary makes the story appear too competent. First, we see an establishing shot of Ueda, and then May enters the frame. We cut to a reverse shot to reveal May. Oh yeah, and the cinematography of the show is extremely boring and unimaginative. But I think you should expect that from these Star Wars shows. Expect a lot of boring standard lighting, flat mid shots, and underutilized virtual production sets. Is this really the most interesting way you could reveal your antagonist? Just them standing looking pouty with a spaceship parked at the back? I'm bored. You're boring me. Oh yeah, and don't worry about standing out, Mrs. Lone Assassin. I hear Crumbopulous Michael could get you some business cards. Hi Morty, I'm Crumbopulous Michael. I'm an assassin. Well, let's see how she manages to track down this Jedi Master. Oh, they just asked for directions. Boring, boring, dull. Huh? A mass hooded character enters the cantina looking for someone? Nope, nothing potentially dangerous here. Hey, at least the bartender is suspicious. Does he have any bouncers he could notify just in case? Anyway, May sees her target and approaches her. This is where your branching path begins. If we go down the assassin route, especially an assassin out for revenge, she could just walk up and throw a dagger at Endara. Get the kill and fight your way out. It's messy, but you'd visually indicate her desire for revenge. Obviously, Indara would catch it and they could have the conversation from there. This way, we establish tension quickly and everyone is instantly informed why May is there. But May takes the respectful approach by challenging Indara in the most cringe way possible. Attack me with all your strength. It's an approach, yeah, often used in anime where a cocky upstart tries to challenge someone way more powerful than they are to prove themselves. I finally found you, Saitama. Today is the day we settle hey, out. sorry. I'm busy. See you around, okay? Though traditionally, the upstart loses, though they receive a valuable lesson that drives them to get better. But it's harder to have that when your character is trying to assassinate the other. Indara refuses to attack, naturally, showing that Jedi stoicism and restraint. But here's where it all falls apart. The two are already engaged in battle. There's no way May will simply go, oh, okay, bye. 
So the question is, how will May make Indara fight her? She could start verbally taunting her, trying to attack Indara's pride. You know, I think I done figured it out. You scared to fight me. You don't want none of this. While it would probably be ineffective, it could encourage the other characters to attempt to defend Indara's pride, which would kick off the fight scene. I would prefer if a gatekeeper stepped in. Gatekeepers are just characters that get beaten up by the villain first to highlight the villain's strength. I, the top disciple Taranko, challenge you! <laughs> I, I give up. It could have been Indara's Padawan who wants to show the snowbody her place. That would kind of explain why Indara doesn't act faster when she sees Mei beating someone up. If it was her Padawan, she could see this as a learning experience for him and still give her time to assess the threat and see if she needs to step in at all. But no, what we got was the worst of both worlds. Unsatisfied with Indara's answer, Mei begins to randomly beat people up. Yeah, just random patrons, just normal people, not Jedi or soldiers. <laughs> Oh my god, what did this guy do to you? Why isn't Indara doing anything? She could have stopped that fist even before it landed on the poor sap. With one gesture, it would instantly establish Indara as a powerful Jedi and aware of the situation. She could use this moment to accept the challenge and step away from the table, giving the patrons time to leave unharmed. But no, Indara just stands there and watches innocent people get beaten up for no reason, making her appear more incompetent and uncaring. Then all I have to do is to create a situation where you're forced to fight! Of carnage! I gotta find a bad guy to take down. Hmm? <laughs> a bad guy. Credit where credit is due, I like the shot of Mei reaching for the lightsaber. As an ex Padawan, it could be metaphoric of her desire to be a Jedi, which has been denied. Of course, it won't work so well if she hated the Jedi. I also want to point out how inefficiently this Jedi Master is fighting. Again, this kind of battle would work if Mei was a young upstart trying to prove herself. Then Indara could toy with her. But the show established that Mei is a menace with an intention to kill and harm civilians. So Indara had all the motivation to knock the kid out when she had the chance or disable them in some other way. Not coming? Then I'll go to you! I'm right here. Heck, she could use the force to grab Mei since we actually see Indara being capable of doing that in this fight scene. Also, what's the point of this shot of Mei disappearing? You'd normally use this shot to set up a sneak attack. You'd slow down the pace and have Indara slowly approach the area. You could even have a shot to reveal where Mei is hiding in relationship to Indara, or have her move past the camera to create a sense of confusion before a surprise attack. But no, she just runs headfirst into Indara. Pointless. What are you doing here? I'm here to kill you. The hey, it's back here. Sometimes it's really bad dialogue and short circuit trend, so allow me to explain. You see, when someone's attacking you with an attempt to kill, I think the reason why they're there is pretty obvious. The worst part is that May actually tells her, and the camera focuses on it like it's some important line that we as the audience should pay attention to. It would have actually been more effective if she didn't answer the question and just did the force push, choosing to let her actions speak louder than words. What are you doing here? <laughs> Worst of all, the entire interaction is riddled with cliches without understanding when to use those cliches. It's almost like the creators saw these kinds of scenes in other movies and just decided to pop them all into one scene without asking why. You do not want to go down this road. A Jedi doesn't pull her weapon unless prepared to kill. Wait, why are you still here? Why, what, your shift hasn't ended so you can't leave? Yeah, yeah, we are playing dirty and winning, even though I'm sure Indara could have stopped both blades. But hey, we got there in the end. Okay, and now Mei doesn't take the lightsaber. Again, you could have done something with that. Maybe she knows she played dirty to win, so she doesn't feel like she earned it. Or maybe during this battle she realized that she didn't need to be a Jedi anymore. Either could work, but you need to focus. Focus, focus, focus. I mean, excuse me, what is this? Why do you even need to kill this guy? What, you care about witnesses now? A bit too late for that. Oh man, this was... oof. Oof. The acolyte has absolutely no chance of being good. If you can't write a fairly simple scene like this, how can anyone expect the rest of the show to be competent? You can't. The best you can get out of the show is a learning opportunity of how not to write. And I hope you got it out of this video. Thank you for watching. If you like these scene breakdowns, please give it a like and leave a comment. And if you want to keep up with all the future content, why not subscribe too? Trust me, with the irregular upload schedule that I sometimes have, you may want to hit that bell too. Anyway, I'll see you around.